I want to thank Clark Kent for the use of his glasses. <laughs> I wish you would give me supervision, but the Lord knows I've never had any supervision. <laughs>
We thank you for your love and for your forgiveness. We praise you for how you reach out your hand to help all who call upon your name. We you know the weights that we carry, the concerns that we have. You know our waking and our sleeping, our every thought and every deed. You know everything about us. We pray that you will minister to us in this time as we worship you. Grant us your peace, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, make us more perfectly yours. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus, who taught all disciples to pray and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, and as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. experiences. Totally despairing of his people because of their worship of an idol, a golden calf representing fertility, Moses was given a new set of stones bearing God's commandments. A new covenant was struck between God and Israel. This conversation revealed to Moses that God would never desert him, though God would always be invisible. So Linda will now read the words from Exodus chapter 33. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way, we shall be distinct. I and your people from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you the name the Lord and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes by, I will put you by me where you shall, I'm sorry, pass, I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. The 
The Gospel reading this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, as all of them have been recently. Jesus' opponents attempt to entrap him with a trick question about paying taxes. In responding, Jesus does not separate material things from spiritual values, as some have presumed. He believed that God is sovereign over all aspects of human life. We can extrapolate from his answer a clear definition of Christian stewardship. God has first call on all our assets. So let us hear these words now from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. When the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said, so they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? <clears throat> Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, whose head is this and whose title? They answered, the emperor's. And he said to them, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him, and they went away. May God bless these readings from his holy word. Please pray with me. Breathe on us, O God, that we may be filled with your spirit and led by your living. Bless the word of my lips and the meditations of our hearts. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a saying that you probably know. Payback is a, a, a bad thing. I don't know if the Pharisees of Jesus' day knew that saying, but they are counting on it being true. They're angry, they're fearful, and perhaps just a bit embarrassed. They're looking for some payback from Jesus. What they aren't counting on is getting paid back themselves. Jesus had been whacking pretty hard on the establishment and the religious leaders. It's Holy Week in today's Gospel. Jesus rides into town and goes to the temple where he drives out the merchants and overthrows the money changers' tables. And then he calls it a den of thieves. To make matters worse, he heals the lame. It makes the blind to see again. And what really makes the chief priests and scribes angry is he does it all so easily. And they gather around him and they corner him and they give him the old, who do you think you are? By what authority are you doing these things? <clears throat> and he doesn't answer. Them. Instead, he says that they are like a disobedient child. Worse than the very people they judge and condemn <clears throat> as disobedient. Well, as far as the Pharisees and the scribes are concerned, Enough is enough. 
The religious leaders about whom Jesus is speaking plot how they can trap him. Things are so bad that they bring the Herodians as co-conspirators. And that's, that's the faction that supports Rome's domination of their own people. Politics, anger, and fear are a dangerous combination that makes for unlikely alliances. Now they approach Jesus and they start with flattery. We know that you're true and teach the way of God in accordance with the truth and show deference to no one. They're buttering him up, you see. Hoping Jesus will let down his guard. What do you think, they ask? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Now, you've got to understand that this question is not about taxes. It's not about the government, Roman occupation of the Jews, or the separation of church and state. It's about them having an agenda. The Pharisees and the Herodians don't care what the answer is. Because either way, they've got it. The questions may be different. But the entrapment is still a part of our world today. Played out every time we oversimplify complex issues. Any time that we categorize people, pigeonhole parts of our lives and try to manipulate God. Is abortion permissible? Well, say yes, you'll be seen as supporting the killing of babies. One who ignores the commandment against murder. Say no, and you contradict a woman's constitutional right as determined by the Supreme Court of the United States. Do you support America's wars? Say no. You'll be seen as unpatriotic and failing to support the troops. Say yes, and you have to answer for the violence, the death, and destruction that seems so contrary to what Jesus has taught us. Jesus, however, will not allow himself to be used or manipulated or co-opted by anyone, the Pharisees, the Herodians, or us. He asked them whose image is on the tax court. The emperors, they answer. Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperors and to God the things that are God's. And any trial lawyer hearing that wants to stand up and say, Objection, Your Honor! The answer is unresponsive. The question calls for a yes or no. But Jesus refuses to play that game. He doesn't answer their question, at least not in the way that they want it. Instead, he deepens the question and turns it into a question of faith, a question of life. If the coin belongs to the emperor, then the human being belongs to God. Each has been marked with the image of its owner. We have been coined in the image of God. As the Book of Common Prayer says, we have been sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. <clears throat> yeah. 
to knowing this. What does faithfulness look like in the issues with which we struggle? It's a hard question. One that is answered neither easily nor quickly. For most of them, it is the, it is the work of a lifetime. And Jesus does not offer simple yes or no answers. So why should we? Faithfulness demands more than that. It means we are continually learning to pay back, surrender, and render to God ourselves and one another. And how will you do that for yourself? Those you love, your neighbor, your enemy. The key, it seems, is knowing to whom we belong. It's one of those answers, however, that cannot be told, taught, only experienced and learned. Faithfulness is more about struggle and practice than it is the answer. It is done at the depths of our image. Get the image right, and everything else will follow. Now there's always issues to address. Taxes, economics, church-state relationships, war, homosexuality, abortion, capital punishment, personal finances, marriage, children. The list goes on and on, as they say. Some of them are global, while others are local personal. The danger is that in dealing with the issues we sometimes deny, confuse, or forget in whose image we and the others have been coined. Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. Jesus is not separating the secular and the sacred. The spirit and matter, divine and human. He's inviting us to hold them together in tension, to unite the two, and in so doing become the currency of God's life in this world. Amen. This is the time in our service when we think about the time that has just passed and the time that is before us. The things that bring us pain and the things that may bring us joy. Let us be together in prayer. <clears throat> God of majesty, your glory fills the earth and the heavens. You are the maker of all that is and of all that is good, of all that seeks good, of all beauty and truth and nobility. You surpass all that we think of you. You are found in places that we do not expect to find you. To speak to us in ways that are so ordinary that we often fail to hear you. And you reveal yourself in things that are so wonderful that we often fail to grasp that you are behind them and in them. Lord, we pray that you may help us to see you and hear you this day. As we take a moment of silence, O oh Lord, we ask that you speak to us and that you hear us and you help us. We offer to you our prayers and we offer to you our hearts and minds and souls so that you may fill them 
with what you want us to have and to be. Loving parent of us all, we know you care for all that you have made and for all whom you have made. Hear now our prayers for your world and for the nations that fill it, for those who hunger and thirst, for the bread and water you give in abundance, for the justice and the mercy that you want all to experience, for the peace and the wholeness that you want all to know. Tender and caring Lord, hear our prayers for those whose pains and sorrows and joys and thanksgiving are upon our hearts this day. We lift them up before you by names that we have shared and the names that we hold in our hearts. Lord, we ask that you give ear to our prayer, and in your love, answer. Amen. We come to the time when we present our offerings. The offering basket is on the rear table because at this point in our time here, it is not safe to pass things around because you don't know what else you're passing. So, let us, let us look in our hearts and see what it is that we are thankful for and give in response to the gifts that we have been given.
please join me now in the unison prayer of dedication as it is found in your bulletin. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, for all those who have given themselves and the talents and the gifts you have poured out upon them in your service. We thank you especially for today for all the offerings made to you in this sanctuary. The gifts that have helped our people to worship the Jewish and to serve you. We ask that you will inspire all of us to give generously as we consider our pledges for the coming year. Our closing hymn is Lead On, Eternal Sovereign, 573.